Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to Any Day Blessings. I'm going to jump into my plan for first grade math, but first, as I like to do, I wanted to share a quick blessing and encourage you to be thankful and count your blessings. Today, I actually ran into a gal that I've um, seen a lot over time throughout, you know, our homeschool classes and swim classes and all of that, and we've become... Um, friends, but we just kind of took for granted that we just kind of ran into each other all over the place and we never really took each other's phone number or, you know, contact information because we were just always running into each other. And then we stopped and I missed her and um, our kids missed playing together, but I had no way to reach her. And so um, we just ran into each other again today after two years and we finally took each other's phone numbers down and Reconnected, so that was great to see her and her family today, and it was a real blessing. All right, I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to just tell you our plan for first grade math. I'm going to do kind of an in-depth review on this because I feel that Bob Jones University Press math gets a bad rap in the homeschool world, and I think a lot of it is just misinformation and not knowing how to use it, not knowing all that's available. There's a ton here. I'm gonna try and unpack it for you, okay? So this is the um, Math One Third Edition, and it's not the most recent edition, but the reason that I'm using this is because I want the option to use the video lessons that BJU puts out, and right now, the video lessons are using the third edition. So I purchased this one, and um, because it's not the newest edition, I was able to purchase um, it used and save a lot of money, so that was good. So as far as pieces, parts, you have a student workbook, um, a student review book, which is optional, and I'll explain that. This is actually the answer key for the test, but there is um, a test packet available, but this was given to me free, so I just took it, and um, I'll tell you how I'm going to use that. And then, of course, the teacher's manual. I'm going to just move this stuff off to the side and show you the teacher's manual first. And as we talk about the other parts, I will pull them in. But I'm just gonna open this up. Um, I had these, I had this, um, you know, actually I'm gonna open up to this part first. Um, I had that saving my spot, um, but I'm just going to, now I know you're not gonna be able to see this really well. Um, I guess I could zoom in a little bit here for you if I can, okay. So, um, this I wanted to show you uh, right off. You can see actually the table of contents to see the topics covered. You can see that online. But I wanted to just highlight um, here for you what's in the appendix of this book, and I will let you see it in a minute. But I would highly recommend leafing through your teacher's manual prior to starting this program because I used K-5 last year. I did not do that. And I struggled using this program last year because I didn't know all that was here. I didn't take the time to read how to use this manual and I didn't like investigate all that was here for me. So I would highly encourage you to do that. I would highly encourage you to look through the appendix, to look through the teacher's toolkit CD, which comes um, with this manual. And you, I'm sure, will find that there is more than enough here to accommodate any learning style. And I, I really believe that. All right, so I'm not gonna um, show you the manipulatives. There are a bunch of manipulatives that um, are available with this. I'm actually gonna use the ones that I, um, I was given. Uh, some, there are pieces, parts to the first grade one that came with this, but um, I'm gonna actually use um, my K-5, and I did a video on this, so you can look it up, but it's just like one of those little coupon organizers, and all my manipulatives from K-5 are in here, and I'm gonna repurpose them in first grade. So you can check out that other video if you wanna know what comes in the manipulatives packet. Um, I wanted to show you at the beginning of each chapter, so this is um, the, the start of chapter four, I just wanted to show you that there is this little section up here called a little extra help. And they have this at the beginning of every chapter, and a chapter is about five to six lessons long, and then a chapter review and a cumulative review. That's all the longer that a chapter is there. So 
basically you have a couple things here that you could do if your child is not grasping the concept presented in the chapter. So they give you kind of a couple things at the start to keep in mind things that you could do to help your child. Then in addition to that, after every lesson, there are extended activities and I'll show you those when we get there. So plenty of, of supplementation, um, extra activities to do. They also have, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So I wanted to show you this here. This page here is a story to introduce each chapter and they really use a narrative to introduce a math concept. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the life of Fred, you know that that's something that people love about that. They use math in story form and in real life situations. Um, this isn't always real life uh, because they do use fictional characters and such to tell the story, but I really found that interesting um, that it gives that narrative flavor to each chapter, which I think a lot of people would like if they knew it was in here. Um, as far as a lesson goes, each lesson has uh, associated work text pages, which the work text here, mine, mine is partially used, so some of the pages are kind of used at the beginning, but it's fully color, okay, and um, very interesting for a little first grader to come and see all these fun things to do, okay, that's the work text page, but then it also has listed if your child does need more review. So again, no need to supplement with this program because there's this extra review book if you need it. There are um, extra pages here that are um, listed for you what extra pages you could do if your child isn't getting the subject in this lesson. So we have the extra help at the beginning here. We have extra review here and then in most lessons, now not in this one, but in most lessons, there is this extended activity section right here. So you could do more activities there. So plenty, plenty of extra activities, extra um, writing pages. So no need to supplement at all with this. You have plenty and I'm not done showing you yet all that you have. So for a lesson, I just want to explain how I do it. Okay, so you have the practice and review right here where you can um, go over things, you know, from the previous day or previous chapters just to kind of what I call um, get ready for math, kind of like a math warm up. Now, this section here introduced a lesson. In some lessons, or it's pretty long, it's a pretty big section, and in other lessons, it's just a little blurb like this. I will tell you, we skip that section. It's just kind of extra. It, it, introduces or continues that narrative that's here. It kind of continues it each day to kind of give that story feel, to kind of give that real life situational math feel. My son doesn't particularly benefit from that. It's not harmful, but it just doesn't particularly help him and it just takes more time. So we usually skip this introduce the, les the lesson section if it's in the lesson. Usually we will do the practice and review orally and then I will start teaching the, the, the new lesson material, which is teach for understanding this portion here. The teacher's comments are in blue and the desired answer is in red. I hope you can see that. Um, and then the, there's of course the, the student work text page there as well. Um, I wanted to show you, like I said, in the back, um, the appendix here. Okay, one of the criticisms I read a lot online about BJU Press Math is the lack of drill, math drill. If you look here, uh, right here, in fact fun activities, uh, oh wait, let me go back real fast, real fast. In this little review section every day, they give you a couple different um, facts to memorize. And in the directions, it tells you to add those to your list of math facts to memorize. It encourages you to either purchase flash flashcards or make your own on index cards. So it, it gives that drill or fact review suggestions uh, in the review each day in each lesson which uh, via flashcards. 
And then it also gives some fact fun activities and there's over a dozen different fact fun games that they suggest um, you could implement at any point, you know, in a lesson or maybe uh, weekly you want to do that. If you want daily math drill practice, the um, CD that comes with this has math drill printouts that you can print out for daily math fact review. So no need to purchase um, the Abeka drill book or the CLE drill book or print out sheets from online. You have it here and um, I think it's 10 facts per, per day. Um, but you could certainly double up and do 20 because there are two days on each page. So you could, you know, double up and have them do 20 math facts a day. In addition to those uh, math drills that are available on the CD, there is also a page in the review book here, the math reviews book. It's um, in each chapter, there is um, on the cumulative review page, there is a sheet of math facts and you could take you could have them uh, do half of this each day and you know go through and just print out all of these pages and just circle them you know cycle them through however you want to do it I mean it's just it's here it's a resource this book is not necessary to the completion of the program this is just available for extra review so you don't have to purchase that but if you did I just want you to know, um, or if you're considering it, that you have math drill um, available on the CD and in that book. So no need to um, feel like you're not going to have adequate drill practice with BJU. There are plenty of options for that. I also wanted to show you one more thing in the teacher's guide and then we'll move on to one other thing. Um, in the back here are a bunch of printouts um, uh, for um, use in the lessons and then there also are printouts, um, teachers visuals and such on the toolkit CD. So again plenty of opportunity to make it a visual and manipulative based curriculum. Oh that was the other thing. <coughs> I'm sorry I'm trying to I'm trying to think of everything that I wanted to show you and I probably should have made a little list, but I didn't. <laughs> um, in the back here, uh, where was it? Oh, here. So say you don't have um, all the different manipulatives that they suggest in the program. They give you um, some suggestions back here about different things you could use for the manipulatives that are called for in the lesson. And I told my husband, I wish I would have known about this for K-5 because we didn't have a balance scale and we could have easily made this hanger contraption to, to do our balance uh, activities. So um, really, I feel like, you know, now that I've read the teacher's manual, you know, uh, the material in the front and in the appendix, I feel like it really would have... Um, made my kindergarten year easier had I known really all that I truly had at my disposal. So I'm just going to um, put this stuff back up here. The tests, again, this is the test answer key and I'm actually not going to probably use the tests, um, but I did want to show you um, that they are pretty much just like another work text page. That's what the tests are like. So um, that is available if you'd like to print, purchase that. I have, um, I have no intention of doing tests right now. I may switch that up during the year, but I, I really feel like um, our cumulative reviews at the end of each chapter will be sufficient for our testing purposes. So that is our plan. This is my longest video for one subject, so I'm sorry for that, but I really wanted to take the time to unpack the teacher's manual a little bit because I really feel like this math program gets a bad rap sometimes. Some people feel like it's too much. You don't have to purchase this. You don't have to do every activity. Um, but that can be overwhelming to some people. So I thought I would just tell you that 
I just do the teach for understanding portion. That's that's my math lesson. And um, it's quick. It's not long at all. And um, if we need more, it's certainly here for us. But I don't spend 45 minutes on math. I really don't. I spend usually less than 20. And it's more than sufficient to teach my son the concept. Um, but when there are days where he's not grasping it, I have plenty at my disposal to help him um, grasp the, the concept. So please let me know if I was unclear in something, if you'd like to see something else, you have another question about the program. And I hope that you found this helpful, but if, if there's something um, more that I could explain, you know, if you're still on the fence, you know, about using this and there's something more I could explain, please just let me know. Have a good day and happy homeschooling.